<clears throat> Dylan is like the color red. We've already got some reds though. But Dylan's like a bright red. Kind of like Mito. But a different type of red. <clears throat> now, strong grand champion, the gold border is like having strong grand champion recognition, right? From one grand champion, one GC, who judges the next GC, right? So if you're at competitions where you're being judged by the GC, in this case, Shosei, Mito has higher status than Dylan because Dylan's not been judged by Shosei, but Mito has been a couple times, a few times. So taking a first place victory, owning a competition where a grand world champion is the, the judge is a higher, a much higher honor. It's higher prestige than winning a world class competition like Luke Kicks. So Dylan just won, um, let me indicate, just to remind myself. That's pretty shit. Hold up. Dylan just won uh, Luke Kicks. Yo, what? Which is a pretty prestigious event. It's a little bit tainted because it supports a lot of uh, inappropriate conduct. So it, it's a little bit lower in terms of prestige. That's one of the problems. When you grow big, people get arrogant, and then they start to do stuff that they're not supposed to do, and then that takes away from like how valuable, you know? But um, Loop Kicks has pretty historic roots uh, for America. It used to be the world championships, like the closest thing to a world championships in the 2000s. And then uh, I would say 2010s power shifted and Europe became, had had a lot more world champion energy to their events in the form of Giga, in the form of the big trick, in the form of high, and then in the form of hooked. And now power has shifted even more towards Asia where Asia and their politics and their skill level, their average battler, um, a lot of power has shifted to Asia in the late 2010s, early 2020s, where we're at right now currently. We're in the mid-2020s, but within the last eight years, power has shifted immensely over to Asia, where many Asian athletes have become the top of the charts. Right now, where we're currently at with Gen 4, we can see that many of the athletes who are you know, top, four, top four class competitors, I'm just putting a bunch of names down, are themselves from Asia. Um, China has grown in power and Japan and Korea and Russia have grown in power. So Asia is the strongest region on the planet. So loop kicks, although there are historic roots, and of course the United States has Michael Guthrie, uh, a lot of grand champions, a lot of the original pioneers of tricking are from the United States but power has shifted. So I don't consider um, Dylan to be in the top three yet. This is from my personal, this is me trying to quantify the world, right? To develop a true ranking system that is truly reflective of where we're at. I see a lot of people in their bios, they put like, oh, I'm the top four world champion, the youth division, blah, blah, blah. But then it's like, well, what about Mito? What about DYG? What about Kaige? What about like all these other people that are winning higher caliber competitions. You think you're top four youth division in the world, but like, what about all the people who are better than you? Because if there's one thing that, that kind of irritates me is when I see, when I look at these posers that get onto Instagram and they put like, oh, I'm the, I'm the world champion karate, blah, blah, blah. And they're part of some association that has nothing to do with like what's happening in America. I'm like, your titles are bullshit. You know, like I don't, if there's one thing that I don't like is when people wear a bullshit title, 
my titles are accurate. They're supposed to be accurate. I will, I will admit that my titles are imperfect, but at least my intentions are, are pure. They're truly trying to reach the actual true highest level of understanding. So my justification for Mito being rank one is because she has the highest status. She has, she doesn't go to some competition where she was destined to win from the beginning and that her best friends are the judges and that all the best in that region weren't allowed to go to that competition because of discrimination or whatever. She goes to a, an open invitation competition that anyone can go to at a competition where the judging panel is so diverse, you know, for example, TBQ or whatever, very, very high, like the principle behind it, the philosophy, the politics behind it is so high level. It's so good. That's what makes it high status. It's the lack of corruption and the lack of, of, um, of manipulation that makes it prestigious and pristine. It's clean. And that's what I want to see in competition. That's why Asia is the best. So is Dylan, he's on the map. He's on the upward trajectory. He just won loop kicks. Congratulations to Dylan. Is he the ranked number one youth in the world? He has the skill level. He's up there with the best. But in terms of the politics and in terms of the prestige of victory, right now, America is offending the sport. They don't want to win. Of course, they don't want to admit this. But America is playing pretty dirty. They're doing some things that they're not supposed to. Whereas Asia, on the other hand, is doing things a lot better. And that's not all of America. There's, But there's a few people in the community who have a position of power and authority who are orchestrating and allowing for things that should not be happening to happen. And it's completely inappropriate. And it actually, it's an attack on the sport itself. It, it fucks with competition itself. It's a disgrace to competition. For the people who are trying to do things for, for the sport, for the benefit of the sport, but they, in the same, at the same time, they actually um, break the rules of what competition is supposed to do, which is to appoint the truth. If people defy that, then you're not helping the sport. You know what I mean? So we have to work towards the, the greater truth, the real truth. That's what adds value to a title. That's what adds value to your trophy is knowing that when you look at that thing, that when you think about your trophy, you know that your trophy is a reflection of where you're really at. And if you know that, that there's if you try to, to live like some lie and be like, yo, I'm the, I'm the best, blah, blah, blah. But we know that there's better out there. We know that there's better competitors. Of course, based on the complexity of politics, it really depends on the situation. It's always a case by case basis. But when trying to figure out where does Dylan fit in to the story of tricking, because he's kind of at that point, I think he's 15, if I'm not mistaken. Last time I checked, I think he was 15. He's like the oldest that he could be for like Gen 4. He's not, he's like, I wouldn't put him in with Gen 3 because he's not, he wasn't battling since 2014, like the way that Shosei was battling since 2014, you know? He's not battling at Hooked in 2018 and stuff like that. So he's not a Gen 3 battler. He's battling now. He's relevant now. So I put him into Gen 4. He's kind of at that age limit, though, like where he's starting to, you know, he's, he's, he's anything past 15, I think, is where it's maybe into Gen 3 territory. But like, he's close enough to Mito. Mito is kind of the benchmark for Gen 4. She kind of marks Gen 4. She's 13. And everyone who's around her is around that age, 13, 14, 12, you know, there's definitely a big difference between 18, 19, 20 year olds and 12, 13 and 14 year olds in terms of, you know, in terms of how they um, present themselves as, as trickers and as battlers. So, um, yeah, I would say Dylan is probably in Gen 4. He's more relevant for Gen 4, and he's not too old, you know? There's some people that they come in really, really late, and it's like they kind of missed their era, you know what I mean? Like, Iori is a very good example. I think he's 18, am I mistaken? Where he's basically the same age as, like, Zen and shit. And it's like, but you weren't around battling when everyone was battling during that era. We're no longer there, you know what I mean? We're not here anymore. This is, in, this is now the past. Gen 3 is the past. This is where we're at currently. This is what's happening right now in 2024 for people who are up to date. So Dylan Berry, I would say, 
in the top four, potentially going to crack the top three. Mito is number one. It's not just a skill level thing. It's also, is it clean competition? And who are the judges? Are the judges historically accurate? Is the competition historically accurate? Loop kicks, historically accurate. There's still a little bit too much shady, funny business going on with loop kicks that I'm not a huge fan of with, with US tricking. So that really does, that, that takes it down. Uh, but Dylan, he's more up to speed. He understands that Asia is in power, that Asia is number one, and that he's even adapting, you know, Nihongo, Japanese. So I respect that. But when it comes to when it comes to American competitions, it's a little bit down their 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 quality is a little bit downgraded. But I like what adrenaline is doing. Adrenaline is a lot more clean politics. Where's Dylan Berry at? What would he need? he would need a lot more high prestigious judges. So let's get to the judging. Let's get to the judging. He had Chris Devera. Dylan Berry has Chris Devera. Or actually, let me fill in. Dylan, Dylan Berry. I don't think that's his last name. That might actually be his last name, though. Uh, he's a world champion and grade one. It's not just about skill level. Wait, how did I do this? Do I put the power? Mm, I think I'll do the power later in life. I'm still working on how I want to do this. I'm still experimenting a little bit, but uh, world champion grade one, that's appropriate. He's got Chris Devera. Who was there? Nick Vale. I don't have Nick Vale on the map. I gotta put Nick Vale somewhere on the map here. Nick Vale is a world champion. Why is Nick Vale like a brown for me for some reason? He's not that big of a star. He's not that big of a star. But he's a world champion. Informal though. Informal, because I don't think he's ever won any serious competitions. He's a smaller star than Will Coney's, for sure. But he's a huge contributor. Nick Vale, oh. Nick vale has done a lot of pioneering in Colorado. Colorado is a very bright place because of Nick Vale. He's a world champion, great battler, but informal. Because uh, I don't think he's ever won like a hook or anything like that, you know? I got to double check on Nick Vale's career. Did he win a first place victory? He's, play he's, he's competed in some very major U.S. competitions. And he might have, and he definitely battled abroad. I think he won actually the team, the American Battle at High. Was that 2015 or something? But I don't really like team battling as a measure of whether someone's a champion or not. Like 1v1 is really the best measure if you're a champion because everything rests on you, you know? But um, uh, let me for now just do that he's a world champion grade battler, informal. Um, who else was judging? Uh, Alex Kerwood, I gotta put Alex Kerwood near Nick Vale because they're both. Alex is like a gray for me for some reason. I don't know why. Alex Kerwood also similarly, he's a smaller star compared to Nick Vale. He's been in the game, for, you know, he's relatively Gen Gen two, same generation as me. Um, what's his name? Alex Kerwood. Uh, I don't think he's a, he's kind of similar to Nick Vale in that sense. That I don't think he's like, he's good outside of competition. Inside of competition, I don't think he's ever like won anything big. I would say he's probably a world champion great battler. He's participated in like loop kicks and stuff like that in like the early 2010s, mid 2010s. For like the, the, the big group battles and stuff. 
but I don't remember him having like a strong solo 1v1 career as a battler. I don't, I don't think he's a formal champion. I think he just went straight to judging because of the politics, you know? I could be mistaken though. I, I don't have a full, like, I don't know everything, you know? Can I? Oh, I can't do that. <sighs> Who else was on the judging panel? Oh, we had uh, Jacob Pinto. Jacob Pinto. And then who won first? It was Levi. I gotta put, oh, I already have Levi. Okay, hold on. Let's put Jacob Pinto. Grade two. Levi's like a grade two. I'm pretty sure he's like grade two. Let's get Alex Kerwood. Let's get Christopher. And then who was the who was that other judge? I don't know who that other judge was. Was that um was that uh fucking Who was that? That um, was that Bubba? Who was that? I gotta double check. I don't. Remember. There's a fifth judge. I don't remember who it was. Was that Bubba? That might have been Bubba. I think it was Bubba. Hold on. Let me pause. Let me double check. All right. I just double checked. I can't. I can't tell. I checked the the Instagram on Luke Kicks, but it might have been Rufio. It might have been Rudy Raynon. That's uh, the, that was the judge there. I'm not really sure. To be honest, I gotta like try to find like a good angle and like just try to make out who that person was. But um, yeah, yeah, that's appropriate. That seems right. I don't have the proportions and everything. Like later when I develop like better models of this, I'll probably try to proportion everything and be more accurate. But for now, this will work because this is this is more realistic. Despite the fact that I'm using like art as like a metaphor, it's this is still a system that makes sense to me, you know. Yeah, that seems appropriate. That seems about right. But I think Dylan could. I think he has like the skill level to be higher than a, a grade one. But. But is he going to travel to Asia and, like, is he going to get high prestige victories or is he just going to stay in America? You know what I mean? Because um, when you're that age, what some people do is they just suck up to um, sponsors, like to KTL or whoever, to try to get a sponsorship. Or they might take a different route. Like, personally, I got a job and, like, I saved money to afford for flights so that I can travel wherever I wanted to go to whatever competition I want, to whatever gathering I want. That's kind of the route that I took. Other people, they'll just live with other trickers and like do everything they can to appease a sponsor so that they can get flown out and get the, the special treatment, you know? Personally, I like to have things more under my control. I don't want to change my personality or change anything about me just to get a sponsorship. I would rather stay true to myself, but everyone plays this game differently. Everyone has a different way to, to try to meet their goals and is willing to compromise in different ways. So we'll see We'll see what these athletes do. So far, Mito is the number one. She's still the best in my eyes, especially. Um, highest prestigious um, competition wins, Adrenaline, TBQ. Um, I think she's also won Oslo. Um, you know, she's doing a really good job. She's She's got really prestigious victories under her belt, so you know, I, it's going to be hard to top her career. People could probably beat her in a contest, but or is your career, is your resume, like, is your history going to be better than her history? Because right now she's got a nice history. And she competes in the 1v1, which is a very, it's a much more important, 1v1 is way more important than teams. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, what all these athletes end up doing. Anyways, I'm out.